to Felix Montes and um, and I just want to thank uh, Linda Cantu. Uh, Linda, uh, we are so grateful for your leadership of this program um, and uh, inspired by it. And um, I just can't say enough good things about Linda. Thank you, Linda. Um, I um, I wanted to yes, uh, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Councilmember Saldana. Um, for the benefit of those of us, who, those of you who are, are here just this morning or might be joining us uh, via Nowcast, um, our friends from NICAP, Nowcast are here. Um, just to mention that the Coca-Cola Diet Youth Program is a research-based, internationally acclaimed dropout prevention model. Um, it, started, it started by IDRA here in San Antonio, um, and we had a wonderful visit uh, with Kindred Elementary at South San this week, where we want to thank um, our partners at South San ISD for, um, for their leadership and organizing that visit for us and, and for the vision and implementing this program um, for the benef benefit of the students as they have for so many years. Um, the program, as you know, keeps 98% of its participants in school um, and it has benefited over 650,000 children, educators, and, and family members. Um, I also, uh, for the Councilman's benefit. I want to recognize uh, the folks that are in this room today because it is you, you all, in addition to South Sun ISD, other leaders from districts around the country who are here with us. So if you all might, just one person from each group, uh, just raise your hand and say where you're from, what, what district and what city you're from. Let's start with the, the back table uh, over here, the table. Okay, so I'm from Los Angeles. Good morning and welcome to uh, Detroit Public Schools. Is, is your I'm Sherry Joy and we're from Hector County ISD, that's the high school. Hector County, welcome. Thank you for being here. Katrina Hanker, Hector County High School. Welcome, thank you. Richard Brown, Jones Tokay School, Sacramento, California. Thank you for being here. Sacramento, California is here. And I'm from California and I'm really grateful. <laughs> I like LA site too. Where is LA? Charles Smith, New Open World Academy, um, Los Angeles University District. Los Angeles, thank you for being here. Thank you. James Austin, Bronx, New York. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for welcome uh, from New York. Mildred Walton, and Tanya Bradley, Chicago, Illinois. Chicago Public Schools, thank you for being here. Good morning, I'm Jose Rosales and I represent La Jolla ISD. We implement uh, the Coca-Cola Value Youth Program at eight of our middle schools. And with me I have a team of colleagues that either are teacher coordinators or counselors who just have different roles in implementing this great program. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here from La Jolla ISD. We have Los Angeles, Sacramento, New York City, Detroit, Chicago, Hector County, Hector County La Jolla, and South San. Um, there are many other programs around the country, and I just want to thank everyone, uh, everyone in this room, because really it's, it's your work that's bringing the benefit of this program to students. Thank you for that. Laurie, I just want to mention that the representative from South San ISD is also here. <coughs> South San ISD, thank, thank you so much, and thank you again for, for hosting us. Um, it was a wonderful visit we had to Kindred Elementary. I you know how proud you were of your tutors there, and we met for two years ago to see the one of the as Linda mentioned, as Dr. Kuntu mentioned, the Idea Coca-Cola Life Youth Program was recently named a National Hispanic Education Bright Spot, and it's one of a number of recognition and awards that the program has received, but of course, the most uh, important impact of the program is for the students themselves. Um, I want to welcome Council Member Saldana, who has a special relationship with this program. She has a long-standing commitment to educational opportunity for students in District 4 and across the city. Um, he's brought tremendous leadership on uh, a number of issues, and I especially want to recognize his leadership around curriculum quality and access. Um, he's a lifelong resident of the city of, of City Council District 4, proud graduate of South San High School. Uh, and after graduating from high school, Councilman Saldana received a Gates Millennium Full Academic Scholarship to attend Stanford University, for those of you who are here from California. At Stanford, Councilman Saldana worked with the John W. Gardner Center at Stanford's Institute for Research on Educational Policy and Programs to promote educational advancement through collaborative research. 
Um, as I mentioned, he has close and unique ties to this program, and I'm so delighted to, to welcome Councilman Sullivan. Well, good morning, everyone. This is, uh, it is one of my responsibilities as a city councilman, as an elected official in San Antonio, to do an official welcome to San Antonio. So welcome and bienvenidos a San Antonio to those who are visiting us from other states, other cities in the city of Texas. Uh, this is an exciting opportunity for me. I, I want to just take you back. So I, I've been in office now since 2011. Uh, I, I would have been uh, 24 when I was first elected to the city council. I was the youngest council member uh, ever elected. Now I'm an old man. It's been four years. So, you know, <laughs> and um, I want to take you back even further than, than 2011. Uh, I want to take you back to, to 1992. And in 1992, uh, if I remember serving correctly, Bill Clinton was in office, gas was under a dollar. A number of things were happening then, but uh, back in the South Sand School District, I was uh, in the second grade, and I was first introduced uh, to the program. And I didn't know much about what the program's name or goal or intentions were at that time. All I knew is, at that time was that they were sending over what for me was, was these amazingly tall goddesses from the middle school who would come and talk to us and, and who would uh, share their wisdom, who would help us uh, while we were going through our math and our science and our tutoring. Uh, a lot of them asking questions of us as second graders that had never been asked of us. Uh, things like what we plan to do beyond school, what we, whether we plan to go to college. I remember having that uh, question asked to me by, by one of the I think the lead at that time was a seventh or eighth grader uh, who was at the neighboring middle school to my elementary. And, and, and realizing that that was the first time I started thinking about what a career was like. Uh, at that time, I thought uh, I wanted to be a physicist. And I actually, now that I've been in office for four years, I probably should have stuck to that route. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I, uh, I, I was introduced to multivariable calculus at my first year in college. And I figured I was going to be a physicist. <laughs> Uh, but it has been exciting for me to watch uh, the, the growth of this program, the impact it's had rippling through communities like, uh, like Chicago or LA uh, or Odessa that uh, make this uh, feel, feel really amazing in the way that it's rippling through our community. And I just want to then fast forward back uh, to 2012, 13, the last few years that I've been in office. One of the most important, or one of the most fulfilling moments uh, of my term in office is when I get the opportunity to talk to students. And I talk to students every, every chance I get, and oftentimes we, we are sitting in a gymnasium in South San or another one of my uh, schools in the districts that I represent, and there are two or three hundred students who are all anxious and excited to be there. And you really have to be on your A game when you go and talk to these, these elementary students, because if you don't have energy and you're not jumping and yelling, you're not going to really grab their attention. Uh, but, I, but I enjoy talking to them about what's possible and uh, what it is that is, is on their horizon. But here's a moment that I get struck with. Oftentimes when I end, I say, well, how many of you all are going to go to, uh, going to graduate from high school? And they all raise their hand. And how many of you all are going to go off to college? And every one of them is raising their hand even further. And how many of you all are going to be doctors or lawyers or engineers? And each one of them slow outpacing the next person next to them, uh, tries to raise their hand even further. And I recall that there was times in which I was sitting in 92 or 93 out in those gymnasiums saying the same thing, uh, that I would be graduating from high school, that I would go to college, that I would find a career. Um, but at that time, I was doing it just to raise my hand. I didn't have a real sense of what it would take to graduate from high school. I didn't have a real sense of what it would be like to go to college. Uh, I represent an area that is very blue collar, hard working blue uh, working class families, where if I would ask someone, tell me about the experience of going to college, I would have had a better chance of, of running into somebody who could tell me about the experience of going to prison, or being in jail, or being incarcerated. Those are the real facts that I think some of our students are facing every single day. They don't know doctors or lawyers or engineers. They know more humble occupations, and that's why they need caring adults, older peers, to challenge them to think about what's 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 out there, what's what's beyond their own reach or their own their own uh, their own mental grasp of what's possible. 
for them. And, and that's what the IDR great IDR program has, been, has done for students like me and thousands mm -hmm. of other students. Believe me, I, I thought this was just a South Stand program, but I was growing up, a little, little bit I know about how far the reach uh, extended. Um, and, and I'll end with saying why exactly it's important um, by telling you just another story about my, my term in office. Oftentimes, they allow me as a city council to do a lot of fun stuff. You can ride along with our animal care officers, you can ride along with our parks department. If you wanted to, you could ride along in the back of a solid waste truck to pick up garbage uh, all day. But the, one of the ride alongs that I rem remember of the last few years that were called as a really uh, compelling moment for me was when I was riding along with our police officers. And at the end of the night, we, you know, we, we end up booking somebody who we take to. I think the phrase is, for most folks is you're, you're going to get taken downtown. When you get taken downtown, you go to a facility that is always sub zero degrees, it's freezing cold, uh, and you get held up in an area where you've done something that night to you know, warrant the fact that you're going to be uh, locked up or detained. And you walk into a room where there's about six or seven different rooms, all with clear walls, and there's probably about eight or nine men uh, in each one of them is even a section where they have women. And I recall walking through one of them and not wanting to look in because each one of these folks is 3 a.m., it's 4 a.m. Um, these folks are not having a great day. And some of them are probably still uh, um, upset and banging on the doors and windows. So you walk by pretty quickly. But at one of the windows, I turned in and because I, somebody was yelling at me, they said, Ray, Ray Saldana, Ray, Ray Saldana. <laughs> and uh, I look over, and uh, it, was one of, it was a friend of mine from, from middle school and high school. And that wasn't, you know, he, 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 he was actually a person who put a smile on my face because he said, you're my counselor, you're my counselor. <laughs> um, but it was, it was somebody who was behind him that didn't show his face, but I could see who he was. He was sort of huddled in the back. Um, and he was one of my best friends, Matthew Ramirez, from the third grade. And I've known him all my life. And you think about where it is our paths will lead us if we don't run into some positive influences, some, some caring adults uh, who can show us a path that is possible. And it's very clear to me that now I represent a, a community and I see things every single day and you realize that there is so much that we can be doing to unlock potential. And uh, it's, it's amazing to see adults who are in the business of unlocking that potential through their work and through the work of, of the program that you help operate them. Uh, so I wanted to be here simply to, uh, to share a few stories and, and hopefully a few laughs about how, how great it can be because there's a positive uh, ray of sunlight at the end of it for folks who, who get to have the opportunity to see things that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and now I get to stand before you as, a, as, a, as an old veteran on the council. Um, I just turned 29 last uh, week. And, yeah, yeah. It's funny, I'll tell you, I'll end with this quick story. When I first ran, uh, it's, it's crazy what happens when you can unlock the potential of some of these young people and they want to do crazy things, but it was, I was 23 and I wanted to run for office and I started knocking on doors. And the first door I ever knocked on, uh, a woman comes to the door and I said, hello sir, man, my name is Ray Saldani, I'm running for city council. Uh, I want to represent you. I, I graduated from South Sand. I know these neighborhoods. I, I, I want to represent you, city council, and make your community a better place. And she stops and looks at me and she asked me, she said, Now, did you say you're running for the San Antonio City Council or you said you're running for the Student Council? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been a wonderful journey for me. I have 3,000 more doors to knock on. Uh, but it's been a wonderful journey for me here in San Antonio. And I hope you'll unlock a lot of these leaders who exist in your communities back where you're. Uh, where you're uh, working. So with that, thank you so much for being here and for the work that you all do.